Father, oh, how we love you. We will always pray. We adore you. Glorify your name. God, the earth. We will glorify your name. Listen, saints, everybody blessings to you. Now, we're dealing with 111, 111 anointings that flow when you create joy for your prophet. Saints, the powerful thing about it is this. I'm going to be um, there's going to be a time this year I'm going to be playing like probably about three instruments we'll have some sessions most likely it'll be on Facebook right and it'll be very powerful a lot of songs that I sing, I will execute them via music. One guitar, other piano, and the other one is a mystery, but you'll see it. <laughs> It'll be shocking to you too. It'll be shocking. And we'll be doing that all this year. I'll do this all this year and it'll be glorious this is not the sound I'm looking for but anyhow we'll be doing this all this year and 
um, the next conferences that I will be having, we will have it. Now, I let me just say this. This conference that I'm doing, I will, I'm not advising nobody to wear no mask. <laughs> if you feel like that's your prerogative, you can. But just know you will be looking like a plum fool if you got on a mask. <laughs> you go you gonna look like a fool. So now when we when we leave and we go into public, uh, of course I'm gonna take care of you. But please don't wear no goddamn mask while I'm ministering. Please don't. I, I'm actually gonna place a demand. Don't wear it while I'm ministering. Please don't. Because <laughs> I have seen some people Nothing against it, but I've seen some people when they're preaching that people got masks. It just looks weird. You know what I'm saying? Only reason why I wear I I, I do that whole mask thing is because I just respect authority. I respect authority. I'll be obedient to authority. You don't want to create unnecessary battles. And you don't want to be uh, arrogant. God will use different things in this life to give you opportunity to use your submission. And the wiser you become, you realize it. Okay. Even the Lord is watching this. Excellence. Things that happen. Sometimes it look like, what is this? But hey. Even it's a test. Everything is a test. Everything is rooted in a test. I'm talking about 111 anointings that flow when you choose to create joy for your prophet. The anointing of counsel, because the counsel is where you have a thought process to find out what is the best decision for every matter. The anointing of counsel, which is the spirit of counsel, which we find in Isaiah chapter 11, verse uh, two, you know, the anointing of counsel causes you to brain. We call it brainstorm, but it's not really brainstorm, right? Because uh, you, your brain not going through a storm. It's a brain uh, submission to God's will. It's a brain submission to God's will. When we deal with that, that is from the anointing of counsel. Remember King Jesus was called by Isaiah also the wonderful counselor, which is very significant. So we see that that counseling anointing is a part of the King Jesus' realm. So when, 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 when you're... Creating joy for your prophet, the anointing of counsel comes. You start re re realizing what, what is the best decision for this scenario. And you'll actually find yourself asking questions. What will my prophet do? What will my prophet respond? How, how will my prophet respond to us? You, you will actually have an anointed brain process, thought process of knowing what's the best decision. Counsel is so important because counsel, it doesn't deal with emotions. It deals with eternity. Listen to what I just said there. I'm, I'm going to give you a lot of wisdom in a couple of minutes. Of course, we'll finish this later on today, Lord willing. But. The anointing of counsel has nothing to do with emotions. It's ha it has everything to do with eternity. So when we deal with counsel, that's why a lot of people go to counseling, because it's to get them out of their emotional state of making decisions. So a lot of people now you see why people go to counselors. But the only the only weird thing about it is that natural counsel can only take you so far because natural people can only tell you so much. Remember, they are natural. Therefore, they only have a natural evaluation of things and a natural solution. And so it's not it's not wisdom. <laughs> it's not wisdom because then they're going to tell you to do something according to the standard that they have lived. And that's according to the natural. And it's not always right. They're, they'll tell you, OK, you, you do this like this. You fix this like this. And it's natural evaluation and natural solution and natural answers. So the anointing of counsel, when that comes from God, now the spirit, the spirit is not dictating what you do. The spirit is giving you an unction to flow in what you should do. But he's not dictating what you should do. 
That's why counsel always comes before demotion. Counsel always comes before destruction. Counsel always comes before death. Listen to me, people of God. So when we deal with counsel, counsel is God saying, okay, I want you to think about this. Consider my way. Remember in Isaiah in the beginning chapter, he said, come, let us reason together. That's like counseling. He said, though your sins be like, uh, like scarlet, they'll be like white as snow. That's counsel. What well, he's saying, let's negotiate. All throughout Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet understood God as a negotiator. Because then he said, pick me in remembrance of the things in which I promise you. We're seeing God as a negotiator. That God saying, you come to me and talk to me about this and I'll consider what you got to say. I'll see if I like it. Remember, it was Isaiah that went to Hezekiah, told him that he about to die. And then Hezekiah goes, prays, makes a vow. And now God considers his vow, his negotiation and said, OK, OG, I'll give you 15 more years. The anointing of counsel shows you the best decision that you should make. One of the anointings that flow when you're creating joy for your prophet, number one, is the anointing of counsel. So you'll find out what is the best decision, what's the best word, what's the best reaction. There are certain things that you don't do. Like, for instance, um, there's, a, there's a way I want to pit this. When I was with Dr. Mike Murdoch, I don't say what well, the Lord told me to tell you. I don't use those terms. You know why? Because it's not a profitable approach to the relationship. It's not a orderly approach. Nor do I say like the Lord told me. I don't do that. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Because in the accumulation of that, it turns into vanity. And then, you know, vanity leads to insanity. So anybody will tell you, even one will tell you, like if I got around that, like You have to know what your part is in the equation of you. Like what part are you playing? And that's what counsel does. Counsel lets you know what part am I playing and what this override boundaries. For instance, if I meet you, I'm not going, if I'm not considering, you know, it, it depends. If I meet you, I'm not going to ask you, um, how many children do you got? You see what I'm saying? Say I just meet you for the first time and like we out in public. I'm not going to ask you how much children do you got. Nor if your children is present, I'm not going to fill on your children. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to say, hey, hey, come on. Give me a hug. <laughs> one, one will tell you because I've been around one children. I don't, I don't touch one children. Ain't nothing wrong with them. They bless because of one. Because of one. But I don't touch them, nor do I converse with them. I can, because I'm over them. <laughs> Juan has has allowed me to be over his children, but I I don't I don't do that. You know why? Because it's not the anointing of counsel for the situation. You see what I'm saying? Nor I would never ask Juan's wife. I won't ask his wife. Hey, uh. Hey, hey, baby. Uh, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you, uh, how you and Juan be doing it? Huh? How y'all be, how y'all be up there, huh? huh? Because that's not the anointing of counsel. Now, I could do that, and it still wouldn't, it, it still wouldn't be wrong, but it's not the anointing of counsel. The anointing of counsel is the best way to approach a situation. You see what I'm saying? Um, the same way, uh, the anointing of counsel also causes you to bring peace. 
So like, you notice Abigail never went to David and said, why are you acting like that? You see what I'm saying? When David was hostile and he was getting the men ready, she didn't say, you're a man of God, you're acting like that? See, the anointing of counsel was on her. So she know, uh-oh, this the king. He wrath. He angry. He don't want no tip. <laughs> he ready to strike. She turned Japanese, Chinese. She was about to do some nails. And she realized it's my time to step in with the anointing of counsel to wean David off of what he focusing on and get him to where he need to uh, 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 be mentally so that he can be back into pleasure. And she became that. You see that. Like I said, um, um, David wanted to sleep with Abigail. He thought that she was sexy. Could we say that David saw her as sexy, sexy when he saw her? Maybe not. <laughs> but did he want? Did he? Did he see her as sexy when she moved in the anointing of counsel? Very much so. And I say these things to you so that you can understand how attractive the anointing of counsel is, because counsel means that in your brain process you have found the golden decision from God, the golden words. The anointing of counsel teaches you. What you shouldn't ask. What you shouldn't ask. You remember the Pharisees was telling Jesus, how are you saying that these people's sins are forgiven them? You think you're God. See, those were questions. Those were evaluations that they, they had no anointing of counsel. But you never saw Peter go to King Jesus and say, why are you telling them that their sins are forgiven them? Because even Peter had the anointing of counsel. Hallelujah. James had the anointing of counsel. Bartholomew had the anointing of counsel. Andrew, all of the disciples, Mary Magdalene, Mary, they all had the anointing of counsel. So watch this. I want to say this to you. I never taught on this before, and this will be so powerful and really bless you. You notice that Mary, King Jesus told a woman is not my time, but Mary never responded back to King Jesus. You notice that, right? Because the anointing of counsel was on her. She went go talk to the men and said, whatever he tell you to do, do it. She ignored the statement that he said. She never said, uh, uh, you know, you better listen to me, boy. I'm your mama. She didn't do none of that. All she just did was proceeded with the anointing of counsel. The anointing of counsel actually led her to counsel those men to be obedient to King Jesus, which is to create joy for their prophet. Hallelujah. You see this. No, number one. Is, to, is the anointing of counsel. Number two, it's the anointing of redemption. Remember, you've been bought with a price. King Jesus, his blood, his death, his resurrection, everything was the price. So when we deal with creating joy for your prophet, you get redeemed out of the hands of the enemy. Psalm 107, I think that's verse 20. Psalm 107, you get redeemed out of the hands of the enemy. What that really means is this, is that Satan no longer has a stronghold over you. Wherever darkness was resignant and reigning and ruling, you are taking back out of that grip of Pharaoh. And now you're set free from bondage and you're now liberated. Now you're in freedom. Now you're in deliverance. The anointing of redemption also works towards your provision. Everything gets redeemed. It gets taken back um, or it gets took back or however you want to say it. And when you're in the anointing of redemption, you're able to take your mind back. Number three, the anointing of the sound mind. Meaning that your mind is not a slave to error, deception and wrong things. Number three is not a slave to error deception and wrong things. When we deal with the sound mind, that means that now your mind is able to receive witty inventions of what God wants you to do so that you can even further along your profit. Um, how could you be beneficial to him? How could you be profitable to him? How could you make his life easy? That anointing of a sound mind also shows you how not to receive the bad seeds of a third voice. 
the bad seeds of somebody that's on the outside looking in and trying to disconnect you from your prophet of God. The sound mind is rejection on the scorner. The scorner, the person that does not have the favor that you have, and therefore they respond to you accordingly. They advise you accordingly. And so that anointing of a sound mind is for you to remain stable. It's stability. Number four, the anointing that flows when you're creating joy for your prophet is joy, unspeakable and full of glory. You will take that on yourself because God will transfer to you how he feels about you obeying your prophet. I love this word, worshiping your prophet. Because that brings reality, which a lot of people have not taught correctly. The, um, how are you going to tell me you're a prophet? Listen to what I'm saying. But then when we say worship, no, we don't worship me, but worship God. Shut, shut up, man. Shut up. <laughs> shut, shut your dumb self up. Then I ain't listening to you. <laughs> if you tell us to don't worship me, worship God, shut up. Then what you gave me instruction for? I'm not listening to you. And people try to sound so humble. No, you sound stupid. Then why you giving? Why you telling me to sow a seed? Don't. If God don't tell you to do it, don't do it. Then what? If God don't tell you to do it, don't do it. So you're not a prophet then. So who sent you? Let me move on before I <laughs> before I give somebody high blood pressure. See, I'm not going to get it because my health perfect. <laughs> but uh, let me move on before I give somebody on here high blood pressure. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I got angry, but it's going to be somebody else going to get it. <laughs> so think about this. The Bible never said worship, believe the God inside of your prophet. But that's what people say. You know, I believe the God inside of you, prophet. Shut your dumb behind up. You can't believe no God inside of what? What is it? Believe the God. Does that what the scripture say? The scripture don't say, I trust the God inside of you. Shut up, man. The Bible don't talk about no believe the God inside of no prophet. You don't see that nowhere in the Bible. He didn't say, if you receive the God inside of the prophet, you shall receive the prophet. He said, if you receive the prophet. He said, believe his prophet. He didn't say, no, believe no God inside no prophet. That's, that's what man did because they couldn't understand. Okay, do we got to worship the prophet? No, we're not supposed to worship the prophet. We're only supposed to worship God. Duh, the prophet is God manifested in the flesh. <laughs> the prophet is God manifested in the flesh. You think that this is just a prophet. No, this is a name that God uses as an alias. It's an alias name. You know, I'm following the God in you. I trust the God in you, prophet. <laughs> and then them same people, when, when, you, when you call them a Brett Wig chicken and you call them Megan the Stallion, sister and brother, then they start saying, oh, well, see, I don't believe that. That's not of God. That's... Let's see, that's the devil. See, I only can believe the God inside of the prophet. The, the things that little ones say, little ones, little ones. So remember the sound mind. Who been writing them down? Who been, who been writing them down? Somebody that been writing them down. I want you to, to let me see who listening on here. So always remember this, that your prophet is there for you to exert energy in the direction of giving God pleasure. Your prophet is there for you to exert energy. So imagine if your prophet is in your life and you're not investing energy towards making that prophet happy. Guess what? You're missing God. 
because God put that prophet there for you to create that prophet's joy. That prophet is leaning on you. That prophet is is uh, looking to you to heed what they're teaching. That prophet is looking to you to live the life in which they have prescribed for you. So that prophet is looking to see the activities of their doctrine inside of you. So I look to see my, 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 my doctrine inside of you. I look to see if you are walking in the wisdom that I'm given. I feel a strong anointing right now. Uh, ever since, um, ever since like the early 2000s, when I would feel the anointing so strong, my whole body would tremble. And the main thing that would happen is my nose would start getting, it would shake. You see what I'm saying? Like my whole face, my whole body, everything is underneath like a, a supernatural, uh, like an earthquake. You know what I'm saying? And it, I don't get nervous. I don't get nervous, but when I feel an anointing on something real strong, like my whole body is in vibration mode constantly. <laughs> And I can't stop it even if I try. And sometimes it takes me hours when I finish teaching to, for it to finally lift. It don't lift immediately. <laughs> Which is why I don't sleep a lot. <laughs> One time God said, I'm going to teach you how to manage your divinity because you operate it with I don't slumber nor sleep. You operate like that, say. Now, say, I can sleep when I want. I don't have a trouble sleeping, but it's just my mind's so electrified on stuff. I handle a lot of business stuff. Joy comes to you while you're creating joy for your profit. It becomes a harvest. The anointing, the anointing of sincerity. Number five, the anointing of sincerity. Also in the number four, the anointed of joy, always remember this. You're going to need the joy because the joy is strength so that you can keep on being, being pleasurable to your prophet and you don't get weary. Because if you have strength, then that means that you have a mental uh, consistency with being the pleasurable experience that your prophet needs. And so what happens is this. That joy is an anointing for you not to get jet lagged when you're flying with your prophet because you're going to be in different time zones. Sometimes you're going to be in the time zone of testing, the time zone of promotion, the time zone of student, the time zone of uh, example, the time zone of faith, the time zone of praise, the time zone of sowing, the time zone of reaping. You're going to be in different time zones. That joy is going to keep you from having jet lag so that you can adapt to the different time zones with a sound mind, with perfect energy, perfect strength. The anointing of joy flows. Number five, when we deal with the anointing, number five, uh, number four, we dealt with the sound mind, uh, we dealt with joy, we dealt with the sound mind. And number five, we deal with, What's number five? The anointing of sincerity. The anointing of sincerity is the spirit now making your walk with him genuine. Where it's not just you talking. Like you're, you're being taken out of the bracket of just mouth and lip service. Now you're able to actually offer up your service to God. So it's different. Like, this is not lip service now. This is not you saying, oh, well, I'm a worshiper. Oh, I love God. You know, oh, I fear God. Oh, I always, I always had a need for God. Now, this is you exercising your sincerity. And so with the sincerity, here's what's going to happen. Your heart is going to break. Your heart has to break for your prophet for you to be sincere. You have to realize the burden that your prophet carries. You have to understand the war that he has faced and what he faces and the wars he will face. You have to take on an anointing of sincerity so that anointing start flowing because now God is empowering you to have compassion for your prophet. 
not to look at your prophet as powerful in the sense that they don't go through nothing. Because the fact that they're powerful means that they go through more than you'll ever know. That's why the power is there as a shield so that their mind can stay in sanity, stay in strength, stay in soundness, stay in power. So that anointing of sincerity makes you look and say, no, I need to be there for my prophet. I need to make sure that he's happy. I need to make sure that he's excited. I need to make sure that he's energized. When you are creating joy for your prophet, nextly, you're going to receive the anointing of pleasure. Perfect pleasure. Remember that the anointing, not of pleasure, but the anointing of perfect pleasure. The reason why I say anointed pleasure is because of this. Anointed ple uh, per perfect pleasure means that this is the pleasure that comes from God. This is where God have you invest your body, your soul, your spirit into creating a heavenly encounter for your prophet. The anointed of perfect pleasure means that when your prophet experiences you, he's mesmerized because what you do, your actions, your decisions, your thoughts, your words, your, your, how you carry yourself, how you look, how you behave, how you respond. It's all so impressive. It's mind boggling. When that happens, favor increases more. Favor is when the prophet can see God in you. My goodness. My goodness, my goodness is when the prophet can see himself in you. A prophet is very unselfish. Your prophet is very unselfish. They pit their self last for others. They make sure other people have enjoyment before them. That's why God schedules enjoyment for them, because they often pit other people's enjoyment before theirs. That's why God makes the law of the prophet. So that they could experience pleasure. The law of the prophet, God creates pleasure for the prophet. Remember what God said to David, whatever you ask, I'll give it to you. If you would have asked me for your neighbor's wife, I would have gave you her too. <laughs> there was people up there. That's, that's how the Islamic religion came into being because David was out. People said, pick, pick the daggone shield. <laughs> pick on your head. Pit on your head. I don't care how hot it is. Pit it on your what? Your head. That's what I said because I know everything about it. Pit it on your head. Cover up your head. Yeah, because that's only for me. That's, that's only for me. Pit, 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 nigga. Pit it on your head. And then they speak in them, them Arabian terms. <laughs> Like, what did you just curse me? Up there, your fingers start getting. What did you just curse me? You just curse me. I can't feel my fingers. <laughs> All right, I pin it on. I pin it on, Daddy. I pin it on. Okay, the hands just get loose again. Don't play with them. Arabian curse on you. That's why that's why they started putting that big old the, the big old draws on their forehead. Put them big old draws, put them big old draws on their forehead because now they realize David was out. God said, "Whatever you ask for, <laughs> whatever you ask for, I'll give it. I'll, I'll give it to you." Say, put this on. <laughs> so you find out where the Islam religion started. It started in David's day. And then they said, all the men said, "Put this thing on your." head. All we're going to see is these eyes. Saints, I want to say something to you. David saw Bathsheba naked and he fell. Um, he fell in love with her. I won't use that term fell in love because it was actually like almost an accident. But he saw her naked and fell in love. Here's what I want to say to you spiritually. He saw that she was a woman that had nothing to hide. Are you seeing this? She was uncovered. See, 
how you create joy for your prophet is, is when you're not a, a, a secretive person. God should never have to have us prophesy in detail about you. You should be an open book. How you create joy for your prophet, be an open book. Be an open book. See, she was an open book. He saw everything. She was up there washing all that. Just <laughs> there was Al Green playing in the back. I and just in love with you. <laughs> and she was just, she had just. <laughs> and David, <laughs> David was at his window eating a piece of chicken. Like, David, son, going to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on the channel, hold on the channel. <laughs> and David was watching her from a distance, but what brought him pleasure was that she was an open book. I want you to see this. She was an open book. There was nothing hidden about her. She had no secret moves. She didn't have things going on under, she was an open book. The idea of seeing her naked, it created joy for him. What I'm saying is that the nakedness in a spiritual sense is that this woman, he don't have to try to figure her out. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm dealing with this in a spiritual sense. He don't have to in, in, in investigate her to try to find out how much She's not really what he thinks. He's able to see this woman's an open book, and and watch. He 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 wanted he want he he wanted her, cause he ducks the once, then he ducks the twice. <laughs> the first time probably was a little a little feeling like he felt great, but that second time he he, he confirmed. He's like, you got something on you, Bathsheba. <laughs> He probably took a bath with her the second time. <laughs> but he 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 <laughs> he saw that she was an open book and she was clean. I'm I'm dealing with um daughter, please. I, I love you, daughter. I love you, girl. Girl, I love you. Please don't say what because it makes me want to throw up because I think Cardi B got fish fish them. <laughs> I think Cardi B and Stallion got, I think they got both parts moving. Yeah, Cardi looked like she got fished them. That's, so, so that sound of wow. I didn't even watch it. I didn't even watch the video. I ain't watch none of it. I didn't want to see it. It was trending on Instagram. I'm like, please. I reported every account that I saw. Report you for indecent activity. I'm reporting you too. I don't know you, OG. Female, she got big titties and a mustache, but I'ma report her too because she got WAP on there. I ain't, I'm not trying to. I don't want. I want. I want to. I want to enjoy the future of going to Captain D's and 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 going to and get fish and chips at restaurants. And I don't want to be traumatized. <laughs> I don't want to be traumatized by no what did it. I don't. I want to be able to have a a a, a a a fish sandwich, if so be, a chicken sandwich from Wendy's. You know what I'm saying? I I don't mean Wendy Williams. I'm I'm talking about the actual place. <laughs> and and doggone it, I want to be. You see, what I'm saying. A long story. Long story short. In short. Never got long. That's what. That's all I want to say about that. Long story short, and the short never got long. But the the long might. Nah, it can't get short either. I'm gonna tell you that right now. So let me, let me keep on moving along strong. Um, but that anointing of sincerity, then the anointing of perfect pleasure. Remember that perfect pleasure means that um, God is able to flow through you fully. To be a blessing. And you are in perfect pleasure. So you're not just giving the king something that you think that he wants. It's, it's like the spirit is actually empowering you 
to be an entertainer for the king. So, so, so the king, the prophet, is getting inspiration, entertainment from your life because you are completely delivered to do that. Do you know that you have to be delivered to give perfect pleasure? Because tradition and all type of things that goes on will tell you not to. The devil does not want you to make your king happy. Remember, so anything that makes your king happy, the devil will say, no, that's not right. Of course he's going to say it's not right because then the king going to be deprived of a grace that you have. And the king needs you. Listen, so the men in Solomon's kingdom, those men were there inspiring Solomon because of their loyalty, their strength, their uh, hunger to learn from him. There was a lot of activities that those men were operating in that made Solomon have so much joy and ecstasy. Those men was giving Solomon a manly distribution of God's presence. And so when he needed a fortified team, he needed real men, real soldiers, real army, real, real um, fortified company of mighty men of valor. They were there. We see in the Old Testament how it talks about men being mighty men of valor. He, the man was operating, the men was operating in a mighty men of valor operation. So therefore, Solomon had a pleasurable experience with them. Um, there was a lot of women in Solomon's day that they were women that God loved them. And God didn't think that any man was worthy to impart to them, to corrupt them. So he just pit them underneath Solomon. As he did then, he still does now. When a woman has a great destiny on her, he can't just let, the Lord can't just let that woman go to waste and let her just be used as trash. If she is a vessel of honor and a vessel of gold, he will find your Solomon and pitch you underneath them because they are the system in which God is saying the seed that comes inside of your heart will not lead you to hell. The, the impartation that you will receive from this man's vessel, his mouth, his words, his thought life, uh, the genius that he's in, he is, the intelligence that he carries the knowledge that he distributes, the counsel that he, he imparts, all of those things are going to edify you. And there's a supernatural intimacy via the spirit realm that it will be as if you're literally satisfied because you will be because the, 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 the path of God where he has the king imparting to you, it takes over your body, soul, and spirit, literally. There were women in Solomon's kingdom that he didn't sleep with them. And if he was going to sleep with them, they, 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 it probably was going to be years. It probably was going to be long periods of time. What I'm saying to you, we see all them things, say 700 wives. You think like Solomon is dooks and all these women. No, some of these women were covenant wives because God saw them as a royal woman and God said, this is going to be your husband. I'm going to pit him over you because I know that he's going to give you the wisdom to direct you in the way of your greatness. I don't trust you to be with the other men in, in Jerusalem and Samaria because with them being over you, then they're going to divert your path as the head of your life. You're not going to have the opportunity to focus on me. We see that with Solomon, that these women, they needed Solomon. We see that these were all great women, but they needed Solomon because, look, they still wanted to worship other gods. So you see that even though they were great women, they were women that had great futures and great destinies. You notice they still had evil ruling them. So Solomon was supposed to knock that out. He didn't do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. But see, we're in a better generation now. <laughs> he was a, he was he was a, he was supposed to that didn't come out too right. But he was supposed to um <laughs> he was supposed to, he was supposed to impart God to them constantly to drive out that realm. 
that was inside of them hiding. Are you seeing this? And he was supposed to overthrow them and overpower them, but he didn't do it. Remember, they overpowered him, which is um, which was a violation. He, he, he should have stuck in his court. Anybody that knows me, see, I'm very strong. Well, say I don't change for nobody like I don't I don't care who it is. I don't change for nobody because I know I know the future of people. I know their destiny. I know what they're supposed to do. I know what they're supposed to produce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill that part of you. The only way that you could actually fail is if you just choose to fail. But I won't let you fail. I don't care how much I like you. I'll cuss you out. I'll talk to you rough. I'll tell you. You're not going to listen to the devil. You, I'm not going to let you do that on my watch. Now, now you, you could stray like a stray dog. <laughs> stray dogs, they walk around the earth. <laughs> You do all that. You can run, 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 with with doggy breath and all of that. But I'm not going to let you go to hell. Nobody goes to hell on my watch. Now, they go to hell on their own watch because their watch don't daggone work. They got the false Mark Jacobs. <laughs> they got the false Rolex. So they go, they're going to fail on their watch. But on my watch, I'm going to give you the goods. I'm going to give you the righteousness. And that's what love is. A king is someone that loves you from the pure love of God. Therefore, they will reveal to you the truth. They will not hide the truth from you. They will tell you the truth. They'll tell you the truth about you because they're not two-faced. A king doesn't have to talk behind your back. In my days, I have called people to their face. I say, I won't tell you this to your face just so that you don't, you don't think that I'm, I'm talking. I want you to hear it from my lips. <laughs> We're not hiding. Because we come with the agenda to change you. We know our assignment. We're not guessing. We know what you can do and we see your greatness. Therefore, we're not going to settle for anything less than that. A king has the countenance of God. If you want to see God, you look at your king. Your king will carry the countenance of God. When you're in the spirit, your king's countenance will transfer, transform from human to divinity, to the Godhead, to the image of God. You will see God in them. You will hear God in their voice. When The more you're in the spirit, the more you transfer yourself from natural analyzation to spiritual summary. Natural analyzation to spiritual summary. You'll understand. The more you're in the spirit, the more you'll get to experience your king supernaturally. There are certain things that your king have that the king imparts to you that are supernatural. But you can't get to that stage until you're operating in the spirit. I anoint people to give me pleasure. I anoint them to give me pleasure. I train them how to give me pleasure. Like, how can I say this? Okay, my sons, they open the door for me. Now, I don't need a woman to do that for me. You see what I'm saying? I enjoy the idea if I see a woman, I, I, I still have a genuine mindset towards a woman. I'm real gentle towards women. I think that a woman is a, pri uh, a pricely treasure from God. I think that a woman is, is, is gold. I think that no man uh, could exercise any type of true dominion without a woman. That's why, that's why the woman, if a woman understands the level of atmosphere she brings, she will know how much is needed of her to keep herself from being broken and damaged because you're going to determine the intensity and the effectiveness of God's work. The intensity, the intensity and the effectiveness of God's work is dependent on the woman. In Luke chapter 8, it was woman that helped me. I had 12 disciples, but it was only women that were the pushers of what I was doing from village to village, city to city. They was helping me travel and they was inspiring me to teach. You have to understand that the purpose of a woman is to push God in the earth. God made women to be wives. He made women to be wives. So even if a woman doesn't have an actual man standing in front of her, he made her to be a wife. And so there are wife qualities that come out of her, even when she doesn't see a man. 
but God will bring her in connection to her divine king so she can have a man to invest those wife qualities into. The thing about it, remember the Shunammite woman, she used her wife qualities to take care of Elisha. And we want to applaud her husband because her husband understood spiritually the authority that Elisha had. We want to applaud the husband. We know that this was a powerful man. We know that this was a mighty king. We know that this was a glorious God in the earth because he was able to discern the godship of Elisha and he didn't stop it. Remember, she asked him, can we build on a house? And he said, yes. Um, the beauty of that, the beauty of that, we had storms even in... Um, uh, many of times, even Hainsey, Hainsey is a beautiful man in heart. He has offered to, 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 if I ever needed him for anything, just, he opened up his home to me. Uh, um, uh, who else? Uh, Juan, 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 when the storm was going on, Juan told me I was about to drive here. I said, no, you ain't driving here. <laughs> you staying right there. I ain't putting you in danger. I'm hot boy. I'm a wild man. I'm going to deal with this snow. Every time I saw the snow, I said, nigga, don't come back here again. <laughs> I'm a wild man. I, I deal, I'll, I'll weather my storm. I'm going to fight some bald head demons. I'm going to slap. I'm going to slap. I'm going to slap them hoes. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to play. When it comes to them, I'm going I'm to I'm slap them hoes. I'm not going to let them demons ride over my head. I'm going to fight them back. You see, you see what I'm saying? I'm going to fight back. I'm going I'm to slap them. So, you know, you know, still today, you know, I'm going to slap them. So, but the mindset of beauty, they say, I'll open up my door to you. I, I, he told me um, with the Texas storm, if you want to come stay here, you come stay here. So what I'm saying is that shows the power of a man. The power of a man is in his submission. Those of you all have watched me, you have seen me submit. And you see, I don't, I don't talk like a lot of people. Like, I ain't got to boast. Like you, you ever seen somebody like they're probably trying to argue, be like, well, you ain't submitted to no, I ain't, I ain't got to prove nothing to you. I respect, I respect and I submit. But God has, God has possessed my body to fulfill a work down there. And I must work the works of him that sent me while it is still day because night is coming where no man can work. Where no man can work.